All right, engineer. So in this video, we're going to continue the uh, series on the descending track. So if you guys haven't already seen it, go watch the vestibulospinal and the pontoverticulospinal. In this video, we're going to talk about the rubrospinal tract. So the rubrospinal tract starts where? Well, it's kind of a tricky little system here. It starts generally within the red nucleus. You know, here you have midbrain, pons, medulla, right? And then you have the spinal cord sections here. And then here's your cerebral cortex, and here's cerebellum. When in the midbrain, you have these special nuclei here. They're called the red nuclei, right? So this is your red nucleus. We mentioned it a little bit um, in the vestibulospinal tract. But again, here is your red nucleus. And again, they're located within the midbrain. Now, we have to know these red nuclei. What is their overall function with respect to what are they doing? What kind of muscles are they activating? Well, it's going to be a lot easier to remember these guys now because we've already said that those are the extensor muscles. So what do you think these two are going to be? These last two here are going to be flexor muscles. So the rubrospinal tract is primarily associated with stimulating what kind of muscles? What kind of muscles would you expect these to be? These are going to be your flexor muscles. Now there's a little bit of... Uh, contradicting evidence out there. They say that the rubrospinal tract, when we talk about flexor muscles, they say it more specifically supplies the upper limb flexors, okay? So they believe that it supplies more of the upper limb flexors, but they say that there's been a lot of research that the uh, rubrospinal tract keeps the uh, distal, all right, the lower limb flexors in check through the mechanism that's not completely well known. But they do know that it's stimulating your flexor muscles, primarily those of the upper limb flexors. So now, we know it supplies the flexor muscles. We know that this tract technically starts within the red nucleus. Why am I saying technically? Because you know there's got to be stimuli. There's got to be something that stimulates these nuclei. What is it? You know the cerebral cortex? Cerebral cortex, you have a bunch of different types of cell bodies up here. Primarily those from the primary motor cortex, the premotor cortex, the supplemental motor area. We've talked about this in the corticospinal tracts. Well, guess what? These guys can have some fibers that can give stimulation to the red nucleus, right? So same thing over here. If I had a couple of these guys over here, here's some cell bodies from the cerebral cortex, from the primary motor cortex, premotor, supplementary motor. All of these guys can come over here and supply the red nucleus. So they call these corticorubral fibers. So what are these fibers here called? These ones? They're called cortico rubral fibers because they're actually going to be going from the cortex to the red nucleus, okay? So from the cortex to the red nucleus, we're going to have these corticorubral fibers. Why am I telling you this? Okay, so from here, you know, the descending fibers, this is basically going to form because it's going to continue. They just give off little collaterals. This is going to continue as the corticospinal tract, right? But what happens is the red nucleus is going to have what's called the rubrospinal tract, which assists the actual corticospinal tract. Now, there's something else that it has to be stimulated by. You know, um, in the cerebellum, it has some special nuclei. And these special nuclei you have here, they're called deep cerebellar nuclei. We'll have a video on the cerebellum in the future. But this, they're special nuclei. Uh, they're called globos. You have what's called the globose nucleus. And you have another one called the emboliform, emboliform nucleus, okay? So we have the emboliform nucleus, and then what else do we have? We have the globose nucleus. So imagine these are these guys right here. So here's your globose nucleus, and here's maybe an emboliform nucleus. Same thing, you'd have it over here as well. Now, what can these globose nucleus and the emboliform nucleus do? What they'll do is is remember, what's the cerebellum good at? It's good at being able to understand what's going on with proprioception. Remember that we're going to have fibers coming into the cerebellum to know, let it know of what's going on with proprioceptors, right? Which is basically understanding the position of our joints, our ligaments, our tendons, and, and muscles within a three-dimensional space. I know where my arm is, right? Where it's, actually, it's touching my nose. That kind of thing, the cerebellum is constantly being alerted of, unconsciously, right? Now, the cerebellum knows that, and he says, okay, red nucleus, so you got the AOK -okay from the cortico rubra fibers from the cortex, but let me give you a little bit even more of a modification. I'm gonna send some information to you from the actual cerebellum, 
via the globose nucleus and the emboliform nucleus. Now, once they come out and tell the red nucleus this, the red nucleus has got pretty much everything it needs to start sending the fibers down. So now from here, it does something really interesting. You know, the red nucleus, it crosses in the midbrain. It crosses in the midbrain, they call it the uh, ventral tegmental decussation. Not necessarily super important, but again, it's important to know that it's crossing. It's, it's, uh, the fibers are going to go to the contralateral side. And it's important to know where they're crossing. They're crossing in the midbrain. They call it the ventral tegmental decussation. Now, as these fibers are going down, right, so here's your rubrospinal tract. The rubrospinal tract is going to go where? So this is our rubrospinal tract. Now what it's going to do is it's going to enter into the, the lateral white column because you know that's where most of the fibers of the corticospinal tract, the lateral corticospinal tract, we said 80% of the fibers cross and go into the lateral white column. Remember I told you the rubrospinal tract is trying to help in this process, it's trying to assist the corticospinal tracts. So it goes down here in where a, a very close to where the actual lateral corticospinal tract, it even might even get intermixed. Now what does it do? From here, it's actually going to give stimulation. It's going to give stimulation to these different types of alpha and gamma motor neurons that are going to be located within the anterior or ventral gray horn. Now, these alpha motor neurons and what else? We also said that there's going to be gamma motor neurons. They can go out to different skeletal muscles. And from here, what type of skeletal muscles did we say it's going to? We said it's going to the flexor muscles, primarily of the upper limbs, okay? So now we know it's going to the upper limbs. Let's assume that it goes down a little bit farther though. Just for simplicity's sake here, we're gonna keep having it come down. And then as it comes down, it gives off another little collateral here. Comes down here, gives off another little collateral right here. Onto what? Alpha and gamma motor neurons. And let's just say that this is, a, this is a cervical part of the spinal cord and this is a little lower, maybe even the upper thoracic vertebrae, right? And these are gonna go up to different skeletal muscles that are important with being able to regulate limb flexion, specifically for the upper limbs. Okay, and again, what is this, what is this motor neuron? This is an alpha, the blue one, and the green one is a gamma motor neuron. Why are these important? The gamma is for the muscle spindles to keep those suckers taut and then the alpha is to cause the extra fusal muscle fibers to contract, shortening and lengthening the muscle fibers. So now, a rubrospinal tract is really important for what? What's the overall goal here? Overall goal is to stimulate the flexor muscles. What type of flexor muscles? The upper limb. But don't forget, recent research has supported that the rubrospinal tract keeps the lower limb flexor muscles intact and in check, all right? What are the stimuli for this tract? One could be from the cerebellum, the deep cerebellar nuclei via the globus and emboliform nucleus, and it can also get collaterals from the corticospinal tract via the cortical rubral fibers. Then it decussates in the midbrain via the ventral tegmental decussation and descends downwards. And as it descends downward, what is this tract here called again? Just for the sake of it, rubro spinal tract. As it goes down, it moves into the lateral white columns. Some even books say that it intermixes with the lateral corticospinal tract, gives off collaterals to the anterior or ventral gray horn, which go to the flexor muscles of the upper limb and keep the actual lower limb flexor muscles intact or in check. So that should make sense. All right, guys, so that pretty much covers the rubro spinal tract. So now that we've covered this one, in the next video, we're going to talk about the medullary reticulospinal tract and go into that one in detail again. All right? And then after this one, we'll have a nice little overview of everything to just make sure that we hit it home with this whole concept. All right? Hope to see you guys there.